Now, here's some news. The best aircraft is the aircraft with the best pilot, period. So when we analyze the Chinese Air Force, we can't overlook training and doctrine. Otherwise, we are missing the key piece of information. Like everything else in China, pilot's training syllabus is quickly evolving. And the Chinese are also quickly evolving their tactical and operational doctrine. But let's start from the beginning. A Chinese person may join the PLAF because it has been recruited at school or because being enlisted, he then applied for the position. In fact, the potential cadet is probably coming from a school where he or she was already noticed as a good prospect. However, in the last few years, the Chinese are also accepting college and university students. In the same way, the Chinese Air Force used to be a predominantly Han force, but now is also accepting people coming from Chinese minorities. Between 1,000 and 1,300 cadets are recruited every year, and about 50% of them reaches the end of the training. The Chinese system is referred to as the four-stage system, and it is also called the 4 plus 1 plus 1, referring to the number of years that are actually required to complete the syllabus. The training starts with four years of academic formation at the PLAF University in Changchun. During these years, the cadet starts almost immediately flying with the simulators, but the real flight has to wait the fourth year with piston engine trainers, and it's going to last for about 250 hours. After the university, the cadet is transferred to one of the three colleges for one or two years. Combat pilots fly on the JL-8 trainer, while bomber and transport pilots use different aircraft and obviously helicopter pilots fly on helicopters. The flight duration in this stage is from 150 to 200 hours. In the following phase, lasting about one year, the pilot receives flight training and tactical training on his or her final operational aircraft. It is in this stage that a pilot may be selected to become a rear seat weapons control officer, basically the equivalent of the weapon system officers in Western Air Forces. At the end of this phase, the cadet becomes a third grade pilot. In phase four, lasting six months, the pilot receives further tactical training and crucially joint operations training. At the end of this stage, the pilot is finally assigned to the first operational unit. The Chinese doctrine has been for a long time even more rigid than the Soviet. Pilots were expected to closely follow a flight plan. They were expected to fire against the targets they were ordered to, when they were ordered to, with the weapons they were ordered to, by the ground controllers. This approach has proven several times to be ineffective and to be basically a waste of resources. In the late 90s and early 2000s, the entire Chinese military doctrine was subject to a revision. The focus shifted from a defensive, generalized popular war to limited regional conflicts and limited power projections beyond the country borders. But this wasn't easy. This was actually a rough ride. Even the display of technology of the Gulf War in 1991 didn't seem to cause an immediate and radical shift. Please remember that the PLAF is a branch of the army, so while the value of attacking ground targets from the air was actually accepted, air combat and air superiority were a sort of an afterthought. The Chinese Air Force has been for a very long time just a support service. For most of the 90s, the most advanced training and doctrine institution of the PLAF was the Flight Test and Training Center in Kanzu. This unit's main task was to test aircraft, uh, weapons integration, uh, flight envelopes to extract the best from what was available. There was a very limited work going on on tactics or training. There were no particular studies either to improve the tactics or provide any form of realistic training. 
However, following the Western example, some experiments toward the end of the decade started using some units as aggressors. At the beginning, they simulated Russian tactics, they were just more familiar with those, but then they moved on and they started simulating the Korean Air Force tactics or, in general, Western Air Force tactics. The key enabler for this change was an agreement with Russia to use the infrastructures available at Lipetsk Air Base. Lipetsk is the Russian equivalent of Nellis Air Force Base and quite curiously the activities that are going on there go under the name of Red Flag as well. It would be interesting to know which one was the original, to be honest. In 1999, a new structure was created at Ding Sing, always under the name of Test and Training Center. Its original purpose was to test and evaluate the proposals that were coming from Kanzu or from the grassroots, from the operational units. Accepting proposals from the grassroots may seem strange, but to their credit, they effectively introduced a process for that. If the proposals were found useful and effective, they used to be formalized in manuals for the pilots, and the pilots were expected to learn and memorize every detail. But the real novelty about Ding Sing was that all these activities were conducted in a high-technology environment that was inspired by the American red flag. So Chinese units started to go to Ding Sing, do their training, do their tests, do their activities, and the first results were a disaster. It became painfully clear that even against a Russian simulated opposition, the current tactics were totally inadequate. And furthermore, it became clear that there was a large disparity of training and quality of the pilots within the PLAF itself. So something radical had to be done. There is a fundamental difference between Russia and China when it comes to strategic thinking. Russia has embraced asymmetry as its doctrine of choice to respond to potential challenges. The Chinese armed forces, and the PLAF in particular, have adopted a different strategy of matching the West, playing the same game, but with different hardware. So it is no wonder that a lot of Chinese hardware resembles the Western equivalent. But they are not copies, they are replicas. And they are replicas because they are built to fit into similar concepts. And among the things that the Chinese started to replicate, well, there was a red flag. In fact, in the 21st century, the quality of training has been constantly improving. Dingxing Base has grown in size and the technology has improved in parallel with the incredibly quick and large Chinese development. Since 2005, regular exercises take place at Dingxing. They're called the Red Sword and they happen in a challenging environment with high technology and a lot of data that can be analyzed after the fact. The size of Red Sword grew steadily from 20 aircraft at the beginning to about 100 today. And in this the case, there have been visible improvement. New tactics have been introduced and even a Red Sword uh, became uh, focused on air-to-ground operation and Blue Sword was introduced for air combat and air superiority. Also, the Golden Helmet competition was created to give the pilots the possibility of showing their capabilities in a free-form context. The analyst's opinion is that the Chinese have really moved away from their inflexible tactics and changed deeply. Then, Falcon Strike 2015 happened. The Chinese have been training with foreign air forces for some time. The cooperation with Russia was very important and is still ongoing. From 2011, there is also a regular cooperation with Pakistan. There have been contacts with Turkey and so on. But in 2015, they went to Thailand for an exercise with the Royal Thai Air Force called Falcon Strike. Falcon Strike was a pretty realistic and unscripted war game where the Chinese J-11s clashed with the Thai Gripens. The first two days of the exercise were dedicated to within visual range engagements. 
this is the weak spot of the Gripen, but one of the strong points of the J11, like all the members of the flanker family. During these two days, the Chinese won most of the engagements with a resounding 25 to 1. Then the exercise moved on to the main event. The two forces fought a simulated, unscripted air campaign where each party was allowed to use their weapons and their tactics freely, with no particular limitations as they would do in a real conflict. And then everything changed. In the following four days, the Thai Gripens shot down 41 J-11s for the loss of only three of their own. The Chinese took a while to elaborate the loss, but it seems to have been a healthy cold shower. In fact, in recent years, a few Chinese analyses have emerged and they were pointing the finger not at the aircraft, not at the weapons, not at the technology, but at the pilot's training. The Chinese pilots did not pay enough attention to the environment around them. Lack of situational awareness they reacted very predictably to the threats. They were quite poor at evading missiles, they lacked coordination, and they were easy to lure into a trap. Since then, in various public occasions, PLAF commanders have stated how tactics and training are the new focus of the service. Since then, the cooperation with other air forces has become even closer. Now we are in 2021, we don't know the situation, but we may expect that they sort of learn the lesson. And if you want to learn more about the situation of the Chinese Air Force, please watch the videos that are going to appear beside me. Thank you very much for watching and see you there.